South Africa lives a more open lifestyle. Hi, my name is Choma Gloria. I'm a biomedical technologist and I manage a fashion business. So if it's your first time coming across this channel, you are highly welcome. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also give the video a thumbs up. Yeah, so in today's video, I will be talking about things that happens in South Africa, but rarely happens in Nigeria. The first thing I will be talking about is that uh, South African prison is like a rehabilitation center where criminals are offered skill trainings to help them make money when they get out of prison. South African police are a little bit friendly because when you meet them on your way, as long as you have your particulars, your papers intact, you can speak to them freely without any restriction. You can speak to them yeah, and they will, they, will, they will respond nicely to you. As long as you have your driver's license, you have your, your disc is up to date, you do not have a problem. When I was in Nigeria, when you meet a policeman, you, you'll be agitated a little bit. You'll be like, I hope they're not going to say I stole something. They're not going to levy an accusation on me unjustly. I hope they're not going to steal something from me. You'll just be a little bit unstable. But here in South Africa, you can be a little, if you can be free to interact with a police officer as long as you have all your documents intact. The second thing I'll be sharing that happens in South Africa, but rarely in Nigeria, is the proof of address proof of address in south africa is very important when i came to south africa i discovered that um, you need your proof of residence for almost everything you do here for example if you want to open a bank account you can't do that without you bringing your proof of residence your proof of address this your home address you you get it and it must have your name on it if it doesn't have your name on it, they're not going to accept it. So it must have your name on it. And it's very important here because if you want to open an account, you want to even register your kids in school, you must have that proof of residence, that proof of address bearing your name. Sometimes if you want to buy some things, you also need that depending on uh, what you want to buy in some places so it's very important it's more like your 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 permits it's very important in this country you know back home in nigeria we use what is called the nepa bill and that nepa bill that time when i was in nigeria it might not necessarily be bearing your name you can just use maybe your landlord's nepa bill or your father's uh nepa bill the house nepa bill you can just use it it doesn't matter if it contains your name or not but in south africa here you must have your proof of residence that contains your full name. So the third thing I will be sharing uh, that, South Af that happens in South Africa, but rarely in Nigeria, is the fact that South Africa lives a more open lifestyle. Now, this is uh, in terms of um, gender choice, uh, traditional practice. For example, here in South Africa, if, if someone can be a lesbian, someone can be a gay and still be free to do things freely, has the freedom to do whatever they want to do. They're not being stigmatized. Yeah, but in my home country, Nigeria, people who are gay or lesbians, they hide They hide it. They don't show it. They don't let people know that they, they are this. Some of them, they hide it. Yeah, it's not like it's rare for you to see someone coming open to tell you I'm a lesbian or or you, you see it clearly that this person is actually a lesbian. Sometimes when you discover that this person is actually a lesbian, you'll be, you'll be shocked to know because you never thought of it. Yeah. So it's something that is not um, openly done in Nigeria. But here in South Africa, it is a free practice. People have the freedom to do that. Even there was a day I went to make my hair at the salon. I saw a guy. I was calling him a guy, but then he looks like a guy. He looked like a girl. So I was even a bit confused of what of how to address him but he was the one that made my hair so i was using he i was saying i i thought he was waiting for someone i didn't know he was making hair i was using the word he he i never knew it was a, if it was a he or she so but you see these people they, they, they don't hide it they just show you that ah, i'm like this they dress it and they look it once you see them you could you could tell that oh, this is a girl this is a lesbian or oh, this is uh, a bisexual you could easily identify that this is this but back home in nigeria if someone comes out openly to, to say i'm a gay i'm a lesbian of course that person a, a lot of people might stigmatize that person you know the, the person might not be really free to do things around yeah so that's something i see that happens in south africa but rarely in nigeria another point on south africa living a more open lifestyle is they're more open to traditional practice 
For example, if someone is a traditional person, a herbalist, they even go to the extent of printing it on a flyer, advertising it. They don't need to hide it or, or, or say or be hiding at the back of Christianity to do it. No, they do it openly. They practice it openly. But in my, my, my country, Nigeria, some people, they, they visit the herbalist, they do these traditional things, but then they still cover up with Christianity. They will tell you, I'm a Christian, but then you, you at the other side, they are still doing those traditional things, doing those, yeah, but they will still tell you they are Christians. Yeah, but here in South Africa, you could see someone who practices these traditional things like a Sangoma. They, they do it openly. They don't hide it. Yeah. So that is it for South Africans. They live a more open lifestyle, yeah. The other points that we'll be talking about is uh, this jungle justice of a thing that happens in my own country, Nigeria. So in South Africa, from my experience, I've discovered that um, when something is happening to someone, people can be around there, but no one will say anything. People might not say anything unless they are really close to you. Like someone can just come and rob someone and take their phone. People might not really say anything. People will be there, but nothing will happen. So that's what I noticed. Unlike Nigeria, when when I was still in Nigeria, then if someone steals a phone and people are around there, they're going to chase the person. People can even use a stick or something. They, they will make sure they deal with that person. That next time, if he sees where people are gathered, he will not steal. You see? But here, like every in South Africa, people like they mind their own business. They don't even care if somebody is, is shouting, oh, this happened. They will just, they'll be looking, they'll watch, but they won't come to do that jungle justice that is done in nigeria that people would gather to catch that person and beat that person to make sure they save the other person that that is being stolen from so it doesn't happen that way here in south africa and these are based on my own experience yeah, so these are things i want to share that i've observed happens in south africa but rarely in nigeria my own country yeah so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you have any of these points you that is same in your country the way it is in south africa the way it is in nigeria you can put it put it on the comment section let me also know that yeah we are same with these people yeah and if you enjoy it don't forget to subscribe to my channel because i'll bring you more lovely and exciting videos see my next video i remain choma gloria or chona go do have a great day bye bye <laughs>